The soundtrack now of life in Hatay. This is the legacy left by the earthquakes. Mountains of memories that could fill more than 14,000 football fields. The UN have called removing the rubble a challenge beyond comprehension. Oh, I think everyone's home. But survivors fear the clear-up of this disaster is the making of another. No one has warned Nezmir about the dangers of living next to a rubble dump, but she feels them. She tells us her grandchildren have been sick too. They suffer most on the days the dust rains down on their tents. Bizim suyumuz, içmek suyumuz, bu ankazın deposu, yeri, bu ankazın altı, bu hepsi insanlar gömüldü bu ankazın içinde. Bu hepsi çürüdü bu malazın içinde. Didik didik didikliyorlar. Yarın yağmur yağınca bu mikrop, bu şey hepsi gidecek kuyuya. Yani başka yerde suyumuz yok. This dust contains thousands of toxins, including asbestos. Turkey's Chamber of Environmental Engineers found it in half of the samples they took in Hatay. The region's governor's office did their own tests and say the asbestos is within safe levels. In Antakya, demolitions are happening street to street. Six months since the earthquakes, it's barely worth a glance. People eat lunch across the road, while lawyer Ejivet Alkan hands out masks, even to the workers exposed every day. Şimdi buraya su sıkıldığını görüyoruz. Ancak bu yeterli değil. Çevredeki insanların uzaklaştırılması gerekiyor. Daha etkili güvenlik önlemlerinin alınması gerekiyor. Ve suyun sürekli sıkılması gerekiyor. The water helps contain the dust. We saw it rarely used. The debris contains everything from heavy metals to white goods. It's then transported to dump points, including this site, placed right next to a school. Şu hemen köşede bir tane konteyner kent var. Şurada okul var, emniyet müdürlüğü var ve sol taraf Akdeniz, Mediterranean Sea. Akdeniz'i kirletmek yasak. Burası bir sulama kanalı, kanalı. Sulama kanalından bitkiler sulanıyor. Ejivet and his team are challenging 18 sites for breaking safety regulations. They claim speed is being prioritized over safety in the rush to rebuild. This is one of the only remaining schools in the area, serving 5,000 students, and everything's covered in dust. Bu okulda temsil ettiğim bir öğretmen var. Sağlık sorunları yaşıyor. Bununla ilgili de dava açacağız. The governor's office here in Hatay say that they've checked the sites and that the asbestos is within safe levels. Do you believe that? Hayır, inanmıyoruz. Çünkü e, Hatay valiliği sadece sonuçları Instagram sayfasından yayınladı. E, almış olduğu örneklerin nasıl, ne zaman, kim tarafından alındığını the Environment Ministry didn't respond to our questions, nor did the local government office, but they have said previously all precautions are being taken for safe rubble removal. This is Yeşilköy, or Green Village. When the rubble started arriving next to Selma's farmland, she joined others to protest, but faced double the number of soldiers. Now her animals are sick, her land, dust and despair, her income lost. Selma, can you eat any of your vegetables? Burada yetiştirdiğim hiçbir şeyi yemiyorum. Her yer Döküm sahası yüzünden moloz dolu, yemiyoruz. Her şey olduğu gibi şu tarafa da bakarsanız her yer toz. There's a dispute here too about whether there are dangerous levels of asbestos. Yaşam alanlarından uzak bir yere gidebilir. Dağlar var, uzak yerler var. 
yoksa bizi zehirlemesinler. Çocuklarımızın sağlığıyla oynamasınlar. The reality is the rubble has to go somewhere and this is a disaster zone. More than 50,000 people lost their lives and millions their homes. There is time, money and political pressure to get this region back on its feet. But many survivors are also asking, at what cost? Emily Wither. Well, when I was reporting from the city of Adana after the earthquake in Turkey, I met Ramazan Yildirim, a civil engineer who himself had built 50 buildings in the city, all of which remained standing. But one built by someone else that his ex-wife lived in did collapse, and Ramazan had to tell his 13-year-old daughter as she lay injured in hospital that her mother had died. Daughter and me and myself, we little cry. We together. Uh, we say that, we believe that the earthquake is not killing people, but bad with building, they are killing the people. Well, I caught up with Ramazan earlier today and I began by asking how his daughter is doing. Oh, my daughter, my daughter, she's okay, but she, let me see, uh, show you the uh, picture about her. This is the, the drawing. It's very sweet. Yeah. Uh, drawing about me and she's my daughter. She's okay. Uh, she is okay, but she is in uh, holiday these days. Uh, little uh, physiological problems, you know, uh, because because of my uh, profession. Now she supposed that I am responsible from the earthquake and uh, damaging because she's she know that I'm civil engineer and uh, constructor. Uh, so that the communication between us it is little bad, it is little bad, it is little bad. Uh, but I hope in future she will understand that I'm not, I cannot be responsible for uh, earthquake. You said to me then that that we must learn from this earthquake. Do you, do you think course. Turkey has learned the lessons in Adana, in our city? There are about 10,000 buildings that uh, heavily damaged, moderately damaged, and slightly damaged. But till now, they didn't start demolish and clear the rubble. They didn't start. When we were together, you told me that the problem in Turkey was that there was not enough control over the building standards. Do you think this will change now? The problem is the rules should be applied. Otherwise, the rule is there. They are in the book or somewhere there in the computer. And, and do you think in this book. will change now? I think so. I hope so. Some authorities about application, they are very sensible now, more, than, more good than before. Ramazan, thank you very much indeed. It's nice to talk to you again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. With my regards, see you. Bye.